Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kathleen Kavins and I wish you a warm welcome at 48 Minutes Unplugged. In this podcast we interview leaders who we think are inspiring. We rapid fire questions at them to discover what makes them stand out. Because we believe the world today more than ever needs inspiring leaders. Leaders who are good at what they do but stand out in the way they do it. Who are able to keep focus in a rapidly changing world and have an impact that reaches further. To truly unplug from busy and tune in into the here and now, we invite our speakers to do a breathing exercise with us. We intentionally do not disclose the questions in advance because we would like to get intuitive and heartfelt answers. We want you to really get to know the person behind the title. The questions have no logical order and that at times might feel a bit uneasy. After 48 minutes exactly, you will hear a turn, which means the interview will come to an end, no matter how exciting the content is at that moment. All our episodes can be accessed via Spotify or Apple Podcasts and do check out our website www.unplug48.com to stay up to date of our upcoming leadership retreats and other activities. Welcome to our fifth episode of 48 Minutes Unplugged. We are now in day 11 of the COVID-19 semi-lockdown in Belgium and we have decided at Unplug that during Corona times we will focus our interviews to a certain extent on this topic because we believe in times of crisis leaders should stick together even more and help each other by sharing experiences and best practices. Today I have a very special guest with us. Sebastian Berlin is a Brazilian-Belgian former professional basketball player who played in the top European leagues for over 15 years. On the 22nd of March 2016, he got severely injured in the Brussels airport terrorist bombings, where he almost lost both legs and near to 50% of his total blood volume. This accident left him unable to walk, let alone continue his basketball career. His positive attitude, however, made him recover remarkably fast. And today, Sebastian is training to run the iconic Ironman of Hawaii, despite his still reduced mobility. He pivoted from being a professional basketball player to being an inspirator to many. He launched Team Berlin, an innovative community and platform whose mission is to create a working blueprint for people to overcome their handicap. In these days, where people around the world are faced with the corona enemy, with a feeling of anxiety and loss of control, there are few people better placed to give advice on how we can all keep focus in the midst of distraction. Nobody better than someone who came face to face with death and lost everything that defined his career in a flash of light. Next to this, I think he also really is just a cool human being. <laughs> the, jury, the jury's still out on that one. <laughs> uh, hi Seb and uh, thanks for making time for us thank, well, thank you thank you for this opportunity um, so uh, first of all how are you feeling today today I'm, I'm feeling good I'm, uh, I'm kind of isolated with my family mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's, it's an advantage to be uh, yeah, for, for a change in pace for a change in, uh, in environment It's not very often that I get to spend a prolonged period of time with them. So there's, uh, there's definitely a lot of positives in, this, uh, in these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And last Sunday, it was uh, four years ago since the, the Brussels airport attacks. Um, does that make this a, an even more special time for you? Yeah, I, I think every, um, every, let's say, anniversary of the attacks is an opportunity to kind of reflect on the journey since March 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, there's been so much that life has gifted me in lessons, in, um, how can I say, uh, in, in new ways to, to see and approach life. And it's, it's nice to be able to kind of pause and reflect on those With, uh, with my family, with, with friends, um, because those lessons are meant to be shared. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, was, it was emotional, but at the same time, very grateful 
that um, I had the time and the uh, ability to to share these lessons that life teaches me continuously mm -hmm. with my family. Mm -hmm. Um, a very random question, but what did you have for breakfast today? Today, oh, I love that question. I had. Uh, I'm a big fan of oatmeal, mm -hmm. but I make really like special I, I take pride in my oatmeal mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> so i have um it's it's i call it my buddha bowl wow so i have uh of course oats mm -hmm. and then i put uh i sprinkle turmeric turmeric uh powder mm -hmm. over it then i uh, a help. big clump of um, coconut oil organic coconut oil mm -hmm. then i put flax seeds mm -hmm. over it And uh, then I put a lot of nuts, like crumpled up nuts, mm -hmm. uh, sunflowers, um, walnuts, and uh, boiling water over it. Let it all mm -hmm. simmer. And then I cut up a banana in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, after my Buddha bowl, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Wow, that sounds <laughs> like true power food. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yummy. Mm. Um, if you were talking about um, feeling... Uh, slightly emotional um these times if you could change one thing about yourself um mentally emotionally and physically what would it be hmm. mentally emotionally physically i'm not sure i have ever spent energy on on that I'm not sure I'm interested in changing mm -hmm. because I think change comes naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you if you sit down and you tell yourself, okay, I need to change this, mm -hmm. then in many ways you're forcing change. Mm -hmm. Change comes naturally if uh, you accept the fact that things change continuously and things in the society will change more and more rapidly like you said mm -hmm. so if you say what can i change about myself i'm not sure i would change anything i accept the fact that i will change um hmm. maybe uh i can rephrase the question and ask is there a change you feel happening at the moment certainly well physically i'm changing from an explosive athlete You know, I, professional basketball is very much an explosive sport. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of interval training, a lot of um, uh, explosivity in, 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 yeah, just explosivity in training. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't remember the last time, well, in, in, my, in my professional career, maybe the, 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 ma the most amount of times I, I ran around a, a track is maybe four times. <laughs> mm -hmm. So a lot of sprint. But now, training for an Ironman, the transition from a explosive athlete to an endurance athlete mm -hmm. is completely completely different. Mm -hmm. And so now it's it's more long term. It's more um, yeah endurance, and that changes your body completely. That changes your approach. That changes your your mental. Mm -hmm. You know, to do a, a sprint of 30 seconds. Uh, you focus for 30 seconds and it's over. But to do a training run of an hour and a half, it's it's completely different. It, it, it takes another mindset to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think physically I'm changing from an explosivity to a more endurance-based, which is fascinating, the lessons learned there. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, I think I... Um, hmm. I, I, I tend to be ver a very emotional person because of gratefulness. I think when you're very grateful, you, you, have a gr you, you realize how lucky you are. You realize the gifts life gives you, mm -hmm. and you become very emotional, um, attached to the hardships of others. You know, why, why am I able to overcome these hardships? Um, why has life given me the tools or the skill set to continuously overcome 
these challenges, but yet others, I wouldn't say struggle, but it's not, it's not easy to see people struggle through things that you've overcome and that are now per se easy. Um, I, I emotionally attach myself a little bit too much to people and their struggles mm. um, without uh, maybe a more calm approach to say, listen, everybody has to go through these struggles. As hard as it is to see your kids struggle, mm -hmm. it's through those struggles that they will learn the skill set to move through life. Mm -hmm. And so emotionally, I'm, I, I attach myself too much Mm -hmm. to uh, wanting to help people, to, to see people not suffering, but go through hardships. Mm -hmm. And mentally, um, you know, like my wife says, I tend to, uh, li life has made me <laughs> a little bit too positive sometimes. You know, my wife looks at me, sometimes, you know, you don't have to be positive all the time, mm -hmm. but it really has become first nature mm -hmm. where the reality is different sometimes than the, uh, the dream. Mm -hmm. And I, I sometimes mentally, I have to be a little bit more realistic, even though I still believe that, uh, you know, positivity to the extreme is sometimes even better than mm -hmm. the negative reality. Mm -hmm. I can totally relate to that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, are people around you worried about the coronavirus and which advice do you give them? Um, people around me are cautious because there is a danger. Mm -hmm. I mean, the coronavirus is not a hoax or it's not a made up thing. It's mm -hmm. a reality. Mm -hmm. But like I always say in my four pillars, there's a big difference between danger and fear. Mm -hmm. So danger is a reality. Is this virus new? Yes. So do the majority of people have antibodies to combat this virus? No. Is the virus very contagious? Yes. But is it... Is it deadly? Well, in certain people who have maybe neglected their health or who have um, a, a history of medical ailments, sure, it's, it's dangerous and it can be deadly. But that doesn't mean you're going to die from it. Mm -hmm. And I think that fear added to the mix only reduces your immune system especially when you need it most. <laughs> that's the irony of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say try to eliminate danger um, and fear. Try, try to realize the difference between both. That mm -hmm. distinction is critical because if you are in danger, then it act. But if you are fearful of something that could happen or even that the data doesn't even point towards then you are stressing yourself. You are in panic mode. You're basing your decisions on illusions, on assumptions. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you probably make the wrong decisions mm -hmm. or you're more likely to make the wrong decisions. And wrong decisions will only create more stress, will only create more problems to face. More problems, more stress, lower immunity, I mean, th this is proven science that stress is the number one factor that lowers the immunity. Mm. So if you are, if you, at the time you need your immune, immune system the most, well, make sure to try to say, am I in real danger or is it just fear that's overwhelming me and that's causing me to think and approach life irrationally? Mm hmm but um, so with this um, virus has also come a massive economic impact and um, a lot of people, uh, business owners have seen their markets um, crash from one day to the next. 
I guess that is a not a fear but a, a danger. Which advice would you give give them? Well, storms pass, and 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 I think that there is no question that businesses will be hurt. But it's almost like you have to make the right decisions of how quickly can we restart when this storm passes. So if you look at the economic model of the pr proposition in Denmark, so Denmark, the, the Danish government put out a, a really interesting, um, let's say, solution. So for the next three months, they will subsidize payroll up to 75% with, with un plafond, with, with a ceiling for their companies. So companies will be able to sustain um, uh, wages, so salaries for their employees. It's going to be lowered. It's, there, people are not going to make the same, but they'll be able to sustain that. What does it mean? It means that people don't have to lay off. The companies don't have to lay off so that when the storm passes, well, they don't have to rehire. They don't have to retrain. They don't have to keep, let's say, facing um, the, the startup headaches um, that initially uh, are, um, are, are associated with restarting the engine. Mm -hmm. So there's no doubt that a crisis leaves marks. But how deep those wounds is a choice. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you face it with, look, we might lose some money. We might lose quantity. But this is a chance to focus on other things and really build maybe a good foundation. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe we have a, a company culture that was very go, 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 burnout, high ratio of burnout, turnover, all those things. Well, maybe this is a chance where you know you're going to have a dip in quantity that's expected. I don't think any shareholder will look at you and say, wow, how, how come you have a dip in quantity? So if you know that's going to be the case, well, maybe limit that through good decisions. Um, take all the steps so that the restart after the storm, because there will be a, a restart. And those who restart the quickest will, will have the most advantage in the next phase of the economy. But on the other hand, it so, is a huge window and opportunity to really focus on the quality of your company. We know quantity will be affected. So focus on the quality. Are your people really happy? In the, in the biggest storms, in, the, in, in such a huge, let's say, economic recession, can you make your people even happier? Because if your people can be happy in a recession, I guarantee they can be happy in good times. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge to create maybe a new blueprint for your company based on quality since you know that quantity will take a hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much. That's very, uh, very inspiring advice for, uh, for everyone, I think. Um, if you would not have become a basketball player, what would you have become? A teacher. <laughs> My plan was always to be a teacher. Okay. In, in, uh, I married a teacher, and uh, I was always attracted to teaching. Mm -hmm. And so my plan was to, uh, you know, play professional basketball as long as I could. You know, to me, I thought it was a pretty good deal to um, to get paid uh, pretty well to play a sport that I love to be in, to stay in shape. And once I retired from basketball. Uh, my wife, who teaches at an international school, we were going to just kind of tour the world and go to international school. At international school, I would coach, teach, and she would teach. And to me, that seemed like a pretty cool life. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So would you um, still move abroad in the, in the future? Do you, or do you have any plans to live anywhere else than in Belgium? Um, well, I, I do have, uh, my wife and I have a, a little house in Michigan. So, um, you know, my wife is from uh, Battle Creek, Michigan. So that's probably the exact opposite of <laughs> Brussels, Belgium. You know, there's not, there's not much in Battle Creek, Michigan. And, and the reason why we chose to buy a, a little, you know, little simple house kind of isolated in the Midwest of the United States, because it gives our daughters kind of the best of both worlds. You have the metropolitan kind of uh, European approach in, in Brussels. And then you have the very Midwest um, unique approach to life in Michigan. And the, those, those two examples kind of allows, I think, a very good overall feel for our daughters. It's, it's nice to bask in those two environments. So to answer your question, you know, I've lived, I, I lived, I lived on three continents of the world before the age of 10. Um, so I, I lived in Brazil, Indianapolis, Philadelphia, Denmark, Italy, Belgium, New York, Michigan. I mean, I lived everywhere. I moved around my whole life. So moving is not something that is new to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I love moving, but now I want to, I want to move not just for the sake of moving, I want if if there's an increased quality to the life to my life and to the life of my family. Sure, I'd be open to moving. No, pro no problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a professional basketball player, you have to be um, continuously high performing. Um, which uh, advice do you have um, to get focused and perform at the highest level? Um, to, to me, there are so many, that's a great question. There, there's so many parallels to sports, to professional basketball, to, to life, uh, to business. There's a lot of parallels. And one of the things that I really, you know, um, how can I say, try to create awareness in my daughters is how extremes are very hard to sustain. Extremes drain energy from you incredibly. So you see that people who, or I would say athletes, um, roller coaster rides, you know, big wins. You win by 30 points one night, and then the next game, you lose by two. And then you win by 10. And then you win by five, and then you win by 20, and then you lose by 10. It's roller coasters consistently. You see the same thing in investment. You know, you have people who spend so much energy trying to get a high return. So they look at, look at the energy, the stress they add to their lives to grow their company by huge amounts, you know, how much it wears and tears on your employees, how much it it, it drains energy from your company. Maybe, maybe the growth is less spectacular, but more consistent. So I think that consistency is a foolproof plan. You see, even individually, in times of crisis, people who live paycheck to paycheck, well, they're most likely going to be affected by a recession. Companies who have stretched themselves to the max just to be able to show ultimate quantitative growth, they're going to be affected by the recession. But people who live a balanced life, who try to stay away from extremes, they weather the storms and they come out ready, refreshed. And by definition, if there's a downturn, well, there's going to be those who are ready to climb that hill because it's going to go back up again for sure. Well, those are the ones that are the leaders. Those are the natural leaders 
after the storms. So to answer your question, in terms of what I learned in basketball is try to stay balanced. It is so easy to feed into the hype. Wow, you guys won by 30, you know, or, oh, you lost by 10, you suck. It's so easy to fluctuate from extremes. The ego will tell us, hey, wow, you're amazing. You, you won by 30? You, you guys won the championship? Wow, you're amazing. You deserve it. And so it's very easy to go to an extreme. Just like it's very easy to lose confidence. Look at a team that's functioning well, and then all of a sudden they lose a big game. And they start losing. They go on a losing skid. Why? Well, they lost confidence. Why? Because they're so. They're, they're, most of those teams have very big highs and very big lows, mm-hmm. and it's hard to get that back. That confidence when you consistently fluctuate from extremes, mm-hmm. and it's it's hard to teach that to young kids because the the extreme, the bling bling, the the quantity that this world is focused on is very attractive. Mm -hmm. And it takes a very good team around you to stay balanced. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe that the most happiest people are the most balanced people. You don't need the most, you don't need the least. Companies that are balanced, that grow, but they don't show the huge growth Mm -hmm. and the, 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 the losses Mm-hmm. I would stay away from those companies, and I think that that's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. But um, how do you do that concretely, like in the day to day? How do you stay balanced and consistent? Which well, which tools do you do you use? I, I I use the very simple tools. So, so for example, my my four pillars. This is not rocket science <laughs> okay I'm, I'm not a i'm not a scientist a doctor an economist mm-hmm. this is just what life i think has taught me mm-hmm. through some very unique experience mm-hmm. um was i a kid that lived on three continents of the world before the age of 10 yes did i have a professional basketball career yes mm-hmm. am i in successful startups yes absolutely um, did I beat death? Yes. I, am I, am I um, more talented than others? No. I just have had more experiences to mm-hmm. learn from. Mm-hmm. And so there are four things that I think are essential in order to find that balance, in order to be alert and aware that change is happening mm-hmm. and to be better prepared for change. So there are four things. One, it's team. So to be able to create a team around you with no ego. Because we teach our kids that they have to be the best. I don't believe that being the best challenges you. Mm. Maintaining and staying the best actually wears and tears on you. Being number one in something, everyone's taking a shot at you. Do you know how much energy you have to look at a basketball team? By definition, if you're the champion, everyone plays better against you. Mm -hmm. Everyone will bring their A game because they want to bring the champion. So by definition, you have to spend more energy because there's no easy game. You know, when, when I played on championship teams, the, the 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 number one thing for the coach that was hard is that there's always very high expectations. So if you win by 15 against a bad team, well, you're supposed to win by 15 or 20. Mm-hmm. But that bad team played their best basketball against you, but you won by 15. Mm-hmm. So it's normal. If you lose against a bad team, it's a catastrophe. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to lose. So if you beat a good team, well, you're supposed to win. You're the best. So to go back to my example, being the best doesn't really bring the challenges and the balance because being the best, you're not, I don't think that that, that's just the ego. That's just feeding the ego. And if you surround yourself with people 
who have an ego, who also want to be the best, I don't think you create the right team. Mm -hmm. So create a team with no ego. Mm -hmm. The second thing, you know, have the humility also with, on the same topic of the team, have the humility to leave things. I always use the example of if you're the smartest guy in the room, change rooms. I think that's one of the most beautiful things that we've lost. Mm -hmm. People stay in relationships. People stay in, in companies where they no longer are challenged. They are the dominant one. They are the, let's say, they're the best in the room. And the ego will tell you to stay there because you're the best. Mm -hmm. And that's very hard to get by. It's very hard to leave. Because feeding the ego feels really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yet if you change, if you change rooms and you go somewhere, you surround yourself with humble people, with people who are better than you, don't you think you'll be more equipped? Don't you think you'll learn more? And the more you learn, the more you add to your skill set. Well, by definition, you, things will become more practical. Things will become easier. So that's the number one. You ask me, how do you put that into pratique? How do, you, how do you put that into play? Well, create a team around you where you're not the best, mm -hmm. where people are constantly challenging you. Two, I think there's the, the second and fourth point are the most important. And we talked about it before, the difference between fear and danger. Mm -hmm. You create your team, and I see people drained by fear. And fear to me is 100% an illusion. If you realize the distinction between danger and fear, it changes the amount of energy you have in being able to apply the skill set that you learned. Mm -hmm. So in those challenges, so I, I got, I learned a skill set. Now I have to apply it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't apply it because they're so focused on fear. And so that fear is those illusions. You know, the example of a car coming at you full speed, that's dangerous, move out of the way. Mm. Being, waking up in the morning thinking, oh, damn, today I'm sure of it, I'm going to get hit by a car. That's fear. Mm -hmm. The chances of you dying from the coronavirus are so minimal, but you are certain in your mind that you're going to get it and it's going to kill you. That's the fear. Mm -hmm. And I see that even though data doesn't show that at all. Data shows that actually in most people, it's very mild. In most people, if you stay isolated, you wash your hands, you, you refrain from socializing, you take the right measures, it's overwhelming data that you will not even merely be affected by it. Mm -hmm. The danger is if you don't isolate. The danger is if you have a very weak immune system. The danger is if you add to the spread of this dangerous disease. That's the danger. And I think that's why it's spreading so, that, that fear is spreading so quickly, which we saw fear then overlap into the economy, into uh, the, the social habits. If you have a clear reality of what is dangerous and you can separate the fear, you make much better decisions. Mm hmm and we started making decisions based on fear and not the reality. Mm -hmm. You know, I see people get into their cars without even thinking about the consequences and the, the danger that exists statistically in cars. Yet, a lot of people don't think twice about driving, but they get into an airplane and they have the worst scare of, oh my gosh, something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, that statistically and the reality is exactly the contrary. Mm -hmm. 
So your, your um, so your tools um, would be a team without ego, humility, and to make the uh, distinction between a fear and danger. Yes, and and the last thing, which, okay, I, I would I would really qualify um, this as probably the most important out of all of them mm -hmm. is that the distinction. So we had the distinction between fear and danger. And the distinction between quantity and quality. Mm -hmm. What do you focus on? You focus on quality. Mm -hmm. And when you have a good team around you, when you don't make decisions based on fear, when you realize, am I in danger or is it fear? Is it an illusion? Is it in my head? Well, you have a lot more energy. You're not drained. You have a lot more energy. Well, you have a lot, let's say, higher chances or opportunities to make the, the right decisions. So what are you going to focus on? What are you going to focus your team on? You're mm -hmm. going to focus your team on quality. Mm -hmm. And the quality in life is, and, and for leaders to focus people on quality is very, very hard. Because good leaders understand that they, will, they are only measured by quantity. Our society has no system, has no, um, has no evaluation, so to speak, for quality. Every, every system that we have created is based on quantity. Yeah. So the metric system, the, the uh, debits and credits, I mean, everything is quantitative. We raise our kids with quantitative approach. The smartest kids are the one who gets the best grades. You have the most degrees from the best schools. Well, you're the smartest guy. You're the bit. You're, you're the sales rep that sells the most. Well, you're the you're, you're the most valued employee in the company. Never mind the fact that maybe you 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 hurt the three other salesmen of your company because you 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 don't share your knowledge to maybe make them better mm -hmm. so again quantity is what we are trained and almost brainwashed to focus on now i'm not saying that quantity is not important i'm saying that good leaders have the confidence and the know-how of how to instill as a foundation the quality mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of courage because anything like love, tolerance, open-mindedness, humility, um, teamwork, all those things are not measurable. Mm -hmm. But they are the foundation of quantity. Mm -hmm. There is no company who has a foundation of quality that in the long run doesn't make it. It will go through ups and downs for sure but they are most likely to have consistency yeah. and to be able to weather storms. So I think the two biggest, let's say, hurdles for top leaders is my company in danger or is it fear? Do I recognize that? Do I have people around me that can help me distinguish fear and danger? And do I have people around me who will support a continuous investment, even if it's not measurable, in the quality of my company. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so exciting right now, Jennifer, because this is the time to invest in quality. Mm -hmm. Quantity will go down. We yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. Unless you're in the, um, you know, there's, there's only a few companies or few markets that really benefit from crisis. Well, you're you're going to feel it, mm -hmm. but this is the perfect time to say, "Listen, we know we're going to feel it. Let's make the right decisions to, re to so we can get ready to, you know, be the first ones out of the storm." Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, let's really focus on the quality of our company mm -hmm. because quality is the foundation of amazing growth. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, 
I think that's uh, very, very powerful advice indeed for uh, for everybody listening um, during these times of Corona. Um, something totally different. Um, do you believe in true love? Oh, wow. I don't know if my wife is going to listen to this <laughs> answer. <laughs> um, do I believe in true love? I believe that there is more ideal love, so to speak. I, uh, love is built, you know, you, um, true love. Yeah, I, I guess I do believe in that. I believe in that. I think that there is the possibility to build true love. Um, I definitely believe in that. Yeah. Okay. And would you call yourself, um, more of a plant person or an animal person? Plant. Which which is your favorite one? My favorite plant? Yep. Tree. Any kind? Um, I like cypress trees. Mm -hmm. I like the, I like uh, cypress trees. Um, they they tend to be able to sustain all types of weather. Mm. They're in the summer. They're in the winter. They're in the fall, spring. Mm. You know, they they go through it all. Mm. And at like a big cypress tree, like I don't know if you've ever been to the redwood forests in California. Wow. No, fortunately not, no. That that's uh, just the energy you feel of mm -hmm. Mother Nature in in those places. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's uh you see these trees that have been around for you know hundreds and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. it, it's just it's it's pretty impressive. What and the, uh yeah sorry go ahead no i'm just i'm just amazed by nature in general yeah so i was gonna ask you uh, what is the most beautiful piece of nature you've ever seen beautiful piece of nature it's a good question i remember being uh, a young kid and being in the fjords of norway mm -hmm. visiting the fjords of norway And I just can remember how water have has have have carved these beautiful inlets mm -hmm. into mountains, and how powerful nature can be. You just got to give it time, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a little bit of patience, which which a lot of us don't have anymore. Yeah, give it time, give it consistency, and these nature will craft the most amazing. Uh, features mm -hmm. with naturally yeah and i don't know if you've ever been to the fjords wow mm -hmm. as a young kid you you stand on top of these huge uh yeah inlets carved by water mm -hmm. and it's so pristine it's so pure it's so calm and peaceful it's it's a very powerful notion to realize look give it time be patient allow allow life to naturally unfold And you know, there's there's probably good outcomes uh, from it. Mm, wow, you really made me want to go there now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's get out of here. Uh, yes. Well, yeah, uh, not quite yet, I think. Um, I wanted to ask you about the the Ironman you're you're training for. Uh, was uh -huh. it supposed to be in April of this year. It was supposed uh, the half Ironman was supposed to be in April, okay. But that was canceled, mm -hmm. and the full Ironman is in October in in Hawaii. So, again, you know, to I kind of I, I don't want to seem like I'm preaching. Yeah. It's just that I, I like to put what I what life has taught me. I like to put into practice, mm -hmm. and I think that as you know, I'm I'm handicapped. I'm not afraid to say it. I, I don't feel anything in my left leg anymore. So anything on my left leg from the knee down is completely numb. Mm. And I have metal, you know, in, in my left tibia is all metal and my right femur is all metal that's reattached to my right hip. Mm -hmm. So my life will be forever one of a handicap, but mm -hmm. you can improve a handicap. It's like, it's like golf. You can, you know, people, people spend a, a lot of time and energy trying to improve their golf handicap. Well, that's how I see, that's how I see my handicap too. I can improve it. It's not easy, but 
the biggest challenge I set myself was, okay, what's one of the hardest endurance races there is? Well, that's a full Ironman in Hawaii. It's one of the hardest Ironmans. Mm -hmm. And so let's try to do that. Let's transform your body. And let's, uh, it's a pretty cool school session. You know, I'm, I'm learning a lot about my body, about health, um, by training and by trying to reach the goal of finishing an Ironman. And how is it going? Good. I got, I got an amazing coach. Uh, Luke Van Lierde, you know, is, uh, is an exceptional human being. And um, most, most of my, the coaches that I've had in my life, Jennifer, it's, um, you know, to be a really good basketball coach, mm. I don't think, or to be even a good leader, a really good leader, if you were the best at something, it's often not ideal for leadership mm. because you have a hard time explaining or creating the processes in order to get your team to a higher level growth. Luke is an exception. You know, you got to remember Luke won the Ironman in Hawaii, the world championships wow. in 96 and 99. So he is an, He, he was the best triathlete in the world. Wow. But he's an even better coach, which is very rare. He's an even better leader. And, what, and the, number one what, the number one thing about Luke is that he's one of the most humble and simple human beings. He's got a credible team around me, his family. You know, his, his family's always first. Um, and he is, if you want to see a champion, But I mean, a real champion. <laughs> I mean, this is a champion where I, I don't think you realize how good you have to be to be able to swim 3.8 kilometers, then 108, 180 kilometers on the bike, and then a marathon back to back to back. And he won it twice But in how? Hawaii in one of the hardest Ironman races there is. Yeah, how do you do that? What is the. What, what is the secret? I mean, I guess uh, resilience and, and determination, but um, yeah. That, I think, have, has he told you that? Yeah, well, well, I think mental, you know, applying the four pillars to this type of challenge. I, I apply the four pillars to everything I do in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's a very easy, let's say, guide and uh, applicable And the more I apply it to things, the more I see that it works. And, you know, Luke is my team. And I also have uh, the best medical ad advice. I wouldn't say best. I'd say the most practical uh, mm -hmm. medical advice. People like Astrid Klaas, who has developed a healing system, a, a method of healing that is really impressive. Mm -hmm. I have... Um, I have a lot of also uh, inspiration. You know, there are 32 other people who died on March 22nd, and I'm very lucky to, uh, to have survived. So life gave me a second chance. That's, that's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, I, I, when, when, when the days get tough, I like knowing that life smiled upon me, and it's a... It's an easy memory, an easy boost of energy to think, hey, there's 32 other people who didn't get that chance. You know, suck it up. Get, 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 get out there and, and, and learn that lesson of the day that mm -hmm. the training has waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's a lot easier than you think if you can apply those four pillars. Mm -hmm. it's, it, you got to do it every day. While most people think, oh, I'm going to go out, I have to go out there and run a marathon, you know, once a week. No, you don't. You, you do just like consistency, do a little bit every single day. Mm -hmm. And if you do a little bit every day, well, then that gets easier. Mm -hmm. You know, the little bit becomes a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. But then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, wow, I just ran 20K. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd ran 20K. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not that easy. It's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. Consistency. 
Yes. Uh, that's the key. Balance. Balance. And um, you, you have kids? Excuse me? Y you have kids? I have two kids. Two kids. I have uh, Vanessa, who's uh, seven, and I have Cecilia, who is 11. Uh, wow. And, and, and how do you make them laugh? How do I make them laugh? Uh, <laughs> mm. <coughs> how do I make them laugh? I'm kind of, I'm really kind of goofy, silly. Mm. So I, um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of hard on my girls. I, mm. I'm, uh, I'm not an easy, I'm not an easy dad. Mm but I, I kind of catch them off guard a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So I will, I'll maybe challenge them and then maybe five minutes later do something completely silly that catches them completely off guard. Mm -hmm. and, and I think they like that. They like being caught off guard mm -hmm. in a very silly and playful way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I usually get the most, the biggest laughs out of them mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I catch them off guard. Mm -hmm. Okay, lovely. And uh, what is your um, go-to snack? My go-to snack. Oh, my go-to snack. Uh, Do you snack? Uh, <laughs> I, I like um, I like bars. I like really healthy bars with a banana or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, kind of a a energy, but really really healthy like i'm a, i'm a little bit obsessed with the uh with the healthiness and and uh of certain things mm -hmm. I've, i've recently i've recently i've recently started drinking coffee i used to never drink coffee never okay Why uh, do i don't drink any alcohol i have not drank since i don't know how many years and i've never drank coffee but i i tend to think that i was getting a little bit too extreme Yeah. with health mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoy a nice cup of coffee just a little bit, you know, with my mm -hmm. wife every morning now before the day starts. Okay. And so I may snack on some, uh, yeah, I guess healthy bars and a, a mm -hmm. piece of fruit. Okay. And how do you unplug? How do I unplug? So um, which, which, what do you do to really get a clarity of mind and uh, uh, a, a run through nature, I, I, uh, like a, a long walk, or I would say these days it's more of a run. Mm -hmm. You know, a long run or exercise in nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you talked uh, the, before the interview. You told me you also meditate. Yes. Like I said, I, I believe in breathing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the the breathing patterns and uh, the, the if you're able to take long, sustained, deep breaths um, at any time of the day, I think it's a good test if there's any blockages of energy in you. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it's simple. Uh, when when things get tough, mm -hmm. it's that. It's that cliche, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. you know, it's actually a pretty simple solution. Mm -hmm. Take a long, deep breath, get all that oxygen flowing through you, and it will tell you if there's a blockage. A lot of people ask, ask somebody to take a deep breath, and a lot of people are incapable of taking a long, deep breath. And I think meditation, where you calm yourself, where you kind of rid yourself of these blockages in your body, can be done through breathing. Uh, daily, daily bra breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what makes you feel uh, elated? What makes me feel elated? Uh, I have kids, mm -hmm. and so when when my girls are are happy, when they've gone through a let's say a challenge and they emerge, you, you kind of, you can see in their eyes that something clicked. Mm -hmm. That makes me, that makes me very happy. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Seb. Uh, the interview has, has come to an end, unfortunately. I um, remember uh, consistency as being key to uh, performance and overcoming challenge. 
and that uh, there is no better time than now to focus on quality as a business. Excellent. Well, I'm glad. Uh, well, thank you for this opportunity. It's, it's always really um, wonderful to be able to share these things. Again, it's, it's not a science. It's just my, my findings in life. But when you're able to share it and uh, uh, to share kind of these gifts, it's always a really beautiful experience. So, so thank you. Thank you very much. I think you are a very inspiring example. And I'm, I'm really super happy we were able to get you on our podcast. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a lovely day, Seb. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all for listening and see you next time. But before you head off, if you haven't heard our previous episodes yet, then I strongly recommend you check them out. You can find them on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Also, check out our website www.unplug48.com to stay up to date on all our upcoming leadership retreats and other activities. Together, let's bring more inspiring leaders into this world. Have a lovely day.